Terror on the Tube. Welcome to Terror on the Tube, where we watch and discuss horror and suspense i almost forgot made for tv movies from the 70s 80s and now twice the 1990s right twice peter twice right you're messing with my freeze oh sorry <laughs> i am gilman joel and i am joined as always by pumpkin Ed peter Hello. and the glorious horror unicorn allison <laughs> I don't know if you should use the word glory. Why not? It's a fun <laughs> word. It's, yes. it, people people will expect too much. No. Or they'll think about glory you'll, holes. I don't you'll know. Do, you'll whoa, do <laughs> whoa. We've been there. I mean, whoa, that's not. Oh, yeah, God. I did. Uh, <laughs> shut up. All right. So we, we are here. And obviously, anybody who's just listening to the audio version, I always say this, I know, but because some people don't know that Mom and Pop Video Shop on YouTube, we have a video version of this episode uh, where you can see Peter consistently freeze throughout. Uh, you can hear him. Thankfully, he doesn't mess with the audio, but uh, you know, yeah, just like right just now, there was no cup there. <laughs> then there's magic. a cup there. It was like one of those awesome <laughs> editing effects like in the 80s where, you know, they oh, they appeared. It's like that was a cut. OK, uh, and so, uh, yeah, we <laughs> are here talking about Peter. Hi, Jack. Get it? You did. You did that last time. Not I did. bad, Ronald. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not bad, Ronald. <laughs> We're not doing that all this time. Uh, we are doing hijack. Hijack. The exclamation, exclamation point. point. So and, you know it's uh, good. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. P Peter. <laughs> oh. Do you have a synopsis? Well, very short. Let's see. Hijack. It was originally aired on September 26th on 19 in 1973. And it was a Wednesday. And it was on ABC. And it's basically, let's see, two truck drivers are hired to transport a top secret cargo from New York to, uh, to Houston. Along the way, they must evade attempts by terrorist group by a terrorist group to hijack the material. Maybe terrorists is a I don't know. Uh, criminals of a sort, but they don't criminals, ever say yeah. what they are. But yeah, yeah. Although they seem fairly organized, they have a helicopter. Exactly. They have. They definitely have funds. They yeah. are well funded. Yes, that's what I wrote down. Cue the helicopter. I was like, ah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. So uh, I think an important question that must be asked, as always, Allison, had you seen this one before? No, I hadn't even heard of it, and um, and then I saw there was an exclamation point, and I was like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> let's see what see what this is going to be about. <laughs> yeah, it's like it wasn't them. Them had an exclamation point, didn't it? I think uh, so. The Killer Ant movie. Yeah, this, I'm trying to think. There's like, uh, was it Zat? Remember Z A A T? I, it was, oh yes. It was like one of those super no budget sci-fi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where, where, yeah where like this early, like the sometime in the 70s in Florida, yeah. I think they made it. It's like Z A A T with an exclamation point. I think. Yep. Yeah, there's a few of those. There's I think there's a trauma those. movie called Zapped with an exclamation. Point. Oh, Zapped with uh, it's Bayo. Is it Scott Bayo? And, 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 and the guy played Bible Man. He was Isn't also that a trauma Jarrett. movie. Am I thinking that, not? No, no, no. Zapped. No, 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 no Zapped is where he gets the, the so he can rip uh, women's clothing off. That sounds That's like a trauma movie. <laughs> it does yeah. well, like it a trauma movie. <laughs> to be <laughs> fair, it sounds like a trauma movie. Uh, I don't know who you know. It's possible. Could it be one of those where trauma just put it out? Because you know, there's those movies. Yeah, yeah, I probably like, like, called, yeah. A like a distribution thing, yeah. not an actual. It's not. It's not like Toxic house. Avenger or Sergeant Sar Sar Kabuki Man or something. No. Not, yeah. You know the high art. The high art stuff. <laughs> 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 I love trauma. I love coffee. Yep. I don't care. Of uh, course. All right, so. Yes, this movie, Hijack. Peter, I assume you also had never seen or heard of this nope, movie before. Right? Nope. So I, I, I had neither. I, mean, I had neither. No, I mean, you, you basically have seen it. I mean, it's nothing new. No. No. But now, last time around, we did not cover Bad Ronald. We covered when Michael calls. Yes. I wasn't. I'm definitely noticing a pattern where I'm not crazy about one. And then the next one, I dig quite a bit. <laughs> and then I'm not crazy about what I'm definitely noticing a pattern de uh, uh, developing, which does not bode well for the movie after this one, because I got to tell you both something. I actually liked this movie. It's not. It's not. A it's bad slow, movie. especially at first. Yeah, yeah. But the characters I liked. I liked that they 
first off, the writing, I always go back to whenever there's subtext, it's like I'm getting a drink of water after going through a desert of garbage media for the last several years. So when I get subtext at all, even even like kind of meh subtext, <laughs> it makes me so happy. So this movie had subtext. Like I love that, for instance, you know, the, the main character, which I probably here, let me go ahead and bring up. Uh, I'll Which one, David Jansen or Keenan Wynn? That would be the David Jansen character, the main guy, Jake. I mean, the cast in this one, just, just with the two leads, David Jansen and Keenan Wynn, it's just, that's enough right there. I know yeah. Keenan Wynn from Piranha. Only? And that's the only thing off the top of my head, but I know uh, I've seen him. He was in a Best Friends with, that we covered over on Rich Movie Geek. That's with, right. Uh, yes, Reynolds with and Goldie Reynolds and Goldie Hawn, yep. Uh, yeah. Orca. Okay. Orca. I haven't seen that since I was a kid. And it traumatized oh, me. <laughs> no, you've seen it because you, you covered it on uh, Forgotten Flakes with Jason. So no, I did yeah. not. Orca, yes, did we? Did. Yes, I think. Are so. you sure about that? Wait, I, I wrote about it, but I'm, you wrote well, maybe, about it. Wait, we never maybe you. It. No, I think you no. just talked. I'm not sure. We may have talked about, talked about it. About I it. have not seen that movie since I was a child. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. He was in The Devil's Reign, which. Okay. Uh, Wait, yes. have you seen The Devil's Reign? Oh, oh I love no. The Devil's Reign. What is The Devil's oh, Reign? You, oh, you gotta oh, watch it. <laughs> Ernest <laughs> Borgnine, William Shatner. I mean, it's just, it's bonkers. Is it, it. What, is it one of those like satanic cult kind of? Yes. yes. <laughs> R-A-I-N or E-I-G-N? Uh, uh, rain. I like the one R-I-N. 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 Yeah. R-I-N. The Devil's oh, oh, it's Reign. Like the, like, it's like, like the, rain. Like rain coming down on your house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Just... A, satan- a Satanist cult leader is burned uh-huh. alive by the local church because, uh-huh. of course, he vows to come back to hunt down and, uh, and enslave every descendant of his congregation by the power of the book of blood contracts in which they sold their souls to the devil. So it's basically the proto Freddy story. <laughs> and by the way, it's one of those glorious PG 70s horror flicks. It probably has like not nudity and everything. PG. <laughs> yeah. What was that? What was the one that um uh, uh that uh, Tyson loves that we covered? Was it Devil Rides? No, it wasn't Devil Rides. What was it? Uh, 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 yeah, um, uh, for with, for uh, with Fonda. For Fleet Fest? Yes, it was with Peter Fonda. Yes. Oh, uh, it's right there. What is it? It's good. The de- Devil's in the title. Yes, I right know. Right now, uh, if, if if Tyson's listening, he's screaming at me. I, I mean, I should know this because I have it on oh, myself. Oh, I'm not the cheat. Run. Uh, not, it's not hell. It's not... Um, God, why? Okay. Why? Anyway, well, while I'm looking it up, the point is, is that this movie, A, sounds very much like a, um, uh, a proto-Freddy movie, but... Yeah, I love so that those watch, seven- watch it. It is amazing. Yeah, it's uh, okay. Hold on. I'm legit. I know people are like, okay, can you get on with the freak show? <laughs> For God's sake. Well, here, Race with the devil. Race with the devil. You can beat me to my computer's taking forever to load. Race with the <laughs> devil. That is what, yeah, I like that movie quite a bit, but that's one of those. I'm sitting there because PG. I'm like, my kids were a little bit younger. I mean, you know, they're old enough now, but we were watching it. There's like a full on like nudie satanic ritual scene. I'm like, mm-hmm. my wife, we're all sitting there like, oops. <laughs> My bad. Uh, but uh, yeah. So David Jansen. Now, why did I recognize him? What do I know him from? It's the Fugitive. Come that on, man. original Fugitive. Okay. And also, he yeah. was in one of the movies we covered a couple years ago. Was yeah. he in that World uh, War II one? It's a wolf. It has a wolf title. It's not about a werewolf, though. It's Moon like of the Wolf. Ki- yeah, Moon it was the really, wolf. it was really good. It was one that you particularly really liked. Okay, I vaguely yes. remember. It was like one? a, yeah. it was like a, like a psychological thriller. Yes. Was it like- Matt? Was Richard Matheson the writer on that one? I feel Possibly. like maybe he may have been. Yeah, but yeah, I Is vaguely remember. Yeah, yeah, like we go on IMDb <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Yeah, no, but he was like the, the fugitive. He was in Marooned, a movie I watched just uh, the other week. As of this recording, uh, with uh, three astronauts being caught caught in space, circling the Earth, a very, very, very tedious and, and a long-winded movie, but not a bad one. Uh, he was in Two Minute Warning. You know that one? Yeah, I've heard of that. Yes. Yeah, it's a good one. Uh, I Golden the- Rendezvous, not so good. Well, I that. I ha- I love the title of this movie he starred in called Smile, Jenny. You're dead. Yes. Have you seen that? Nope. So it's an ex cop. Hey, that's Jodie Foster. Yeah, yeah. An ex cop protects his ex partner's supermodel daughter, which she becomes a target of an obsessed psychopath who kills the men intimately involved with her. And I'm assuming Jodie Foster is the supermodel. 
interesting because uh, she seems like she'd be fairly young. It's a 74. 74. She did Taxi Driver in 76. Mm, so it's Hollywood like a, was oh, all that, about underage Jodie Foster for a but, while. But, 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 <laughs> but here's the thing. If he's killing the men intimately involved with her, it can't be Jodie Foster. Ooh. Like It's got to be somebody else. Maybe she's like the like the daughter or the some Maybe. connection. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, well, that, that, yeah. Although, interestingly, Zalman King was in it. Isn't Zalman King the Red Shoe Diary guy? I'm pretty sure that's the red uh, guy that did all his red shoe diaries. Might be. And yeah, uh, nine and a half weeks. On a rabbit trail. Well, I know we are. This is turning into Retro Movie Geek. Wild Orchid. I know he did like those like soft core-ish kind of movies. And Clue Gulliger was in it. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I digress. Anyway, I thought he was really good at this. I like his character. I like David Johnson. First off. A good actor. Oh, yeah. And, and I, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I miss how... And I realized it was probably all just because it was like like everything else with Hollywood. It's a fad. But when they actually had blue collar type working people as their heroes, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? Like they yeah. they don't it's like they never really do that that much anymore. And it's it's like I always think of like uh, Norma Ray or when we did Silkwood or, you know, just like just real people regular work people. jobs that yeah. all of us can relate to on some level. Uh, you know, if you grew up in any kind of environment like that. So. All I'm saying is I like that there's two truck drivers. I loved that. Uh, so the Keenan Wynn is sort of his driving partner, I, I guess. Mean, uh, to, to go back to that, it, it, it makes sense that they would take jobs like this because they're kind of like l- low pay and they get a re- you go you go from from A to B and you earn this kind of money. OK, that seems easy enough. OK, we'll do it. If yeah. you have one that's fairly well off anyway, they wouldn't do it without an, a more incentive or something. Yes. Like. These guys workers need the cash and especially Keenan Wynn's character. Well, and they set it up nicely because it wasn't the only motive. If it just been money, then it, you immediately had it's, it's a weak motivation in and of itself. Yeah, David Jansen's mm-hmm. character has he lost needs, his he license. Needs his life. <laughs> he's had problems, right? So we know he's uh-huh. got a, uh, he's got issues. Uh, yeah. He's flawed. And then the Keenan Wynn character's got health problems all over the place. So mm. It was a good way to say, okay, these guys have more motivation than just monetary gain. Because I feel like that in and of itself wouldn't be enough. You would end up having, if that's all it was, then about halfway through the movie, they'd have to find out what they have is of such importance. You know what I mean? That it's going to save the world. And then that becomes, a, you could, that isn't enough to sustain it and not make them not these superficial characters. But what I loved is there's a simple, simple moment early on when the William Shaw, is it Shallert? Right, they play Shower. Frank. Yeah, which that by the guy. way, that guy has like been in everything. I feel like he's like that dad character. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so William Shallard has almost four hundred credits. Oh on god, IMDb. yeah, he was in so many it's- things. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Like it's so many things he was in what? that Inner Space, in yes, the Heat he of was. the Night, uh huh, House Party Two. Okay, probably not one of the biggest parts. I think was it that it was that uh, he was, was in that, he was, was that in, the pajama one? Was that the Jammy Jam one or whatever? It was called? Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was. I think it was. He was in. Uh, we did uh, the the death sentence. The TV oh, movie yeah. with uh, with the young. Um, God damn it! The this is why man. you should let old people podcast. I know. <laughs> oh, uh, I remember the one you're talking about. Uh, Forty eight hours. Uh, um, are you talking about the Nick cr- Nolte? Nick Nolte. Nick Nolte. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where he was yeah. very soft spoken. That so William Shallard was he, he was either the the he was one of the the lawyers. Yes, I vaguely remember that. And I yeah. also remember not was- loving that movie. <laughs> I remember- wow. If memory serves, uh, but okay. that that being said, uh, he's one of those guys. You as soon as you see him, you're like, oh, I know him. May yeah. not know what from what you know him, but he is the guy that hires these truckers to, to move a shipment and here's yeah. the key things and i'll get back to what what happens that transpires that was subtle i a love that we set them up as these flawed characters that need something to to make sure they can continue you know paying their bills i love that they're just regular folks they're just these working guys right i loved that the William Schaller character, you don't know, you presume he works for the government, but at some point he does say it's some corporation. So it's like, a, I think it's like a middle man, yeah. corporate, like a, a contractor, right? a military contractor. And so we never know it, you know, until the very end, which by the way, spoiler alert, because we will be spoiling this, until uh, the very end, you don't even know what's in the truck. I love Listen, that. I love that we didn't you know. You don't know the cargo 
at all. Because we don't think about it. We also don't know these people who are after it. We they, Are they after it for money? Are they after it because of what it is? Are they after it for the government? Are they after, you, know, you don't know. And the breed of that is, is because we are in uh, day, uh, Jake and Donnie, the Keenan Wynn and David uh, Jansen characters. We are in their point of view. They don't know. So why should we know? So no, they tra- now they could have done it to where we know something to help build suspense. But I kind of hmm. liked in the case of yeah, this. We don't know. We didn't know. And it, and it never was confusing. You didn't. It's yeah. not like, well, why is this happening? You got the motivation. You got that these bad guys are after what they're after. You just don't know why yet. And you know, you know the small things also that I like because uh, the for, uh, for the the Frank Kleiner uh, character, the the William Shatler uh, character. Yeah, he he first approaches David Jansen and says, "You get five thousand for this job." Yes, I think you, you, you can. Yeah, and you can uh, mm-hmm. uh, bring a co a friend or whatever, and I'll throw in an extra thousand. This was the and thing I was getting at, D- D- Peter. This is the this yeah. is the thing I loved. Yeah, and the David Jansen character immediately says, "Okay, we split it down to have three thousand, three thousand." But it's important. But it's important. Here's the key. This is why I love that moment because he's in the office. And Keenan Wynn is waiting in the other room. He's not in the oh, room. Yes. And the guy and and Frank says to uh, to Jake, he says, "Hey, five thousand for you, thousand for your buddy. He can go with you." Okay. Yeah. He doesn't say anything to Frank. He leaves no. the room, and when he the other guy's not Frank's not in earshot, he tells Donnie, "Hey, man, it's three thousand a piece." And that's exactly. such a subtle small thing. It like shows that. his character. He's an honorable guy. He's a good friend. He's loyal. And he knows that Donnie is prideful to the point where if he tells him 5,000 for me, a thousand for you, but I'll give you two. Like if he tries to do that gamut, he knows that Donnie will reject it. No, no, no. You keep your, but he knows he's that guy. That's why. Cause that comes into play later on with yeah. what he does to save Donnie's life. And it's like that I do that. That's a subtlety that when I get it in a movie of any sort at this point, I'm like, oh, oh, it's wonderful. It it's like it a work. drink it of water. It yeah. Yeah, it's it a really it nice work. way to introduce you to these characters yes. and make you make you like them and care about 100%. their friendship. And we also yeah. just in case anyone's curious, we we were watching this last night. Drew and I, we um, busted out the inflation count. Cal- uh, calculator so it'd be like uh, around twenty one thousand for each of them nice. <laughs> in today's money nice. nice i was wondering that how much the the difference would be that's cool uh which is funny because even though what's sad is i feel like by today's standards i don't even i mean i guess twenty one thousand to somebody especially if they haven't got they lost their license or whatever i guess it's a lot of money but for whatever reason because inflation's been so extreme as of late I always felt like it would have ended up being more like fifty or a hundred thousand in in nineteen seventy three dollars, but but my point is is that it still it makes sense. Everything makes sense why they're doing what they're doing. Um, I loved that it builds slowly and the way these the bad guys you never know who they are you never know why but you yet you get enough Isn't of the, the one of the, the leader apparently in the credits he's just known as bearded man. <laughs> the bearded man. You didn't even get a name. Yeah. So, and, uh, and, and man, and I, man with glasses. That's the bold dude. Oh, and that, oh, 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 when that guy showed up on screen, yeah, here he is. John A. Z oh, is man with yeah, glasses. Man with glasses. Bearded man. <laughs> Highway Patrol Captain. Yeah, all of them. Because actually, yeah, yeah. very few characters. First cowboy. Helicopter pilot. Uh, only Mr. Noonan. Mrs. Briscoe and Eileen Noonan get names. Everybody yeah, else yeah. is just like described by their their job or yeah. some descriptor. Yeah, so yeah. the man with glasses, when as soon as he showed up on screen, I said, well, kids, I know who I'm cosplaying as. <laughs> 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 the, the bald white guy in the horrible pants. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> horrible pants. Oh, <laughs> those were some pants. Those were some pants. You would see him coming sure. up. By the way, real real way to stay out of sight, out of mind, right? Like way to stay camouflaged, buddy. Like you're not gonna <laughs> sure. even in 1973, those pants stood out. All right. Um, but what I loved is the subtlety of it. They never explain anything no. but you're never no. confused listen it, you don't know when the movie's over you don't know what the cargo is ne- no not the, fully we'll get to that don't don't yeah. say what it, we, we do see nope. what's in their truck yeah yeah, yeah. but it just all these questions which i loved and because that's not what the point of this movie is right that's not what this movie was about it was about this these characters and this journey they literally go on and that's that's a great thing about any kind of road movie and look full disclosure I am a sucker. This is one of my favorite subgenres. Any suspense thriller set on a back yep. road highway. I yep. love what, Peter? Were you going to say something? No, no, it's like, I'm, a, I'm there too. Oh, I, I love, love it. a good trucker movie. Duel, so, uh, Breakdown, uh, Convoy. Uh, Joy, what's that? 
Convoy, Convoy Josh. And that's the other thing. There's a lot of those trucker Breaker, movies. Breaker. I never watched Norris? a lot of those trucker movies, and I want to go oh, back yeah. and watch them now. <laughs> the Chuck I want Norris to- trucker movie, Breaker, Breaker. Yeah, I know. I know. Now, for me, I typically love the ones like the, uh, what was it, Night Terror with uh, uh, oh. Valerie Harper we covered. That was really good, yeah. I love that where it's a psychopath and a person that has to survive the cat and mouse aspect of it. Actually. Oh my God. I've, this is a perfect opportunity. So we just watched a movie about a month ago. So definitely it's, it's far after we covered night terror. Cause it would have applied better to that. It's called alone. It's on Netflix and it's directed by the son of Peter Hyams. I think his name is John Hyams. It's about this young woman who's moving and she crosses paths with a serial killer, basically. And it is so freaking good it's like a nine out of ten for me it was so good it's, it's a, it came out 2020 i think and i came across it i was like uh it's gonna suck it's gonna suck. i was i'm sorry i was like so cynical at this point anything has come out last year i was like oh it's gonna suck i don't want it to <laughs> suck but it's one of those like she's it's always she fights back but it's a very realistic i think depiction of what it would be like to be hunted by this psycho if she has to use her wits it's like it's so freaking good alone the back roads uh, are, are uh, dangerous and i think me. and i think allison if memory serves i think it's your neck of the woods i think it's like oregon washington state is where it takes Ooh. place so um you've got to it's so good oh it's such a great movie so but it fits this one so i didn't completely go off uh, the, the rails there on that no, one no, no. but but my point is is that i love that kind of movie that back road you know, and, and usually just a couple of characters surviving and nobody believes them. And, and all like that because that happens in this one. Right? And the other thing I thought was kind of cool is I figured at some point it was going to be like the cops were in on it. Right. Because they kind of set it up that way. It felt like that. But no, they were just kind of a little inept and didn't believe. And they, they were not, they, there was no evidence. They didn't believe them. Well, to be fair, he pointed out that's where you can see where the brushes on the sun, where the, the, the wreck burned. I mean, it, it yeah. even mm-hmm. though there's no wreck, you would still as a cop like, huh, that is weird. Why is it all burnt there? Yes. You well, would have uh, you would have at least given him, a, him a, the benefit of the doubt anyway. But uh, yeah, but I, I guess you could say who knows how many like people out of the desert they get claiming sure. crazy yeah. stuff to them. And you get cynical. Was, you, the unfor- the unfortunate Mims. nature of that job is this level of cynicism and the way it makes you view humanity as a whole is going to have its toll to where you're not going to take. You know, I mean, not everybody, but you're going to not take it serious after a while when somebody comes and you there's not there's nothing there. There's no car on fire. But I don't want to get that far ahead because early on what I loved is, OK, so we establish the, the bearded man and the bald guy and a couple of these characters yeah. that are following them. And yeah. then we, we have the, the cliche truck truck stop fight. Yeah, we have the, but, but it's used, <laughs> it's used to destroy. It's a, it, I don't want to give anything away, but would you argue it was a decoy? Me foreshadowing Ooh. perhaps baby. Mm-hmm. And so they go, what I love by the way is Keenan Wynn is like, look, I know he was probably only like his late fifties. Dude looks like he's like 85 years old. He's throwing down. Yeah. He's beating the crap out of this young guy. It was great, but it, but it felt real. It felt like these guys are going to be very sore the next day. And I, but while they're doing, it, it was a distraction. So the ball guy's in there messing with their truck and he scurries away. Like the rat he is when they come out and, and they, and they, but they are smart. So I love this movie. The characters are smart. They know something's going on, right? You're, you're, this isn't an accident that this is happening. They don't know why, but they do know that, A, they're carrying a cargo that they don't know what it is, and it's probably connected to the government somehow. B, they got into a random bar fight, and while they were in there, somebody started messing with their truck. Yeah. C, something's up. That's all you yeah. need to know. And so the fact that they then, the next part where they go to this diner again, right? They stop by another diner. To go into you, the, he goes into seeming to use a phone or bathroom. I can't remember what he goes in for. Jake does, and then the the bald guy. Oh, that's right. Jake goes to the bathroom. The bald guy uh, gets out of his car, goes into the diner, and then I think we never see Jake come back to the truck, right? But we just assume one of them stayed back in the truck, if memory serves, and then the other one comes back, and so we assume the truck leaves. So he comes out, it gets goes to his truck car, and while he's in his car watching the truck pull out of the road, he's on this little radio telling him, oh, they're, they're coming, blah, 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 be prepared. You see Jake come around, and yep. it, smart that yeah was so freaking it's simple it's so it's not it's like he's a genius it's just common sense that's what you would do and it's also like, he brings the walkie-talkie 
And yes. And he takes and he busts the guy over the head, drags him off, distribute, rips the distributor cap out so he can't drive his car. And then so then they're down the road and then they start hearing the talk on the radio. And he, it's like, uh-oh. he just so, answers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, that was smart, right? Because if he says too yeah. much, they're gonna know it's the, it's not the guy. Yeah, so exactly. and I love, by the way, I love with this. So there's a they just to set it for the audience. There is a they've created one of those fake roadblocks you've seen in a jigging of these types of movies, and they're gonna basically jump them when they get the truck through it, and. Yeah. They, but because they've got the bad guys walkie talkie a la die hard <laughs> they, they can hear what they're talking about and <clears throat> the bearded man the guy in charge sends a message to the bald man whose walkie talkie it is that hey we got everything in place we can hear the truck coming and he go and then he just says you know yeah like response but then he goes patrol car behind us yeah you know and then they scramble like rats they're picking oh, yeah. up codes <laughs> yeah <laughs> which immediately tells you okay the cops aren't in on this right because That's why exactly. would they care if the local fuzz was in on it so um i loved it's that little small details oh so they basically that's good writing it's not overly complicated it's a very simple story yeah it's I mean, so well told yeah. it's so exactly. well told it proves a point you don't have to have originality if it's well told no yeah, exactly. What makes it original is the characters themselves. It's like each of us has. A, yeah, by the way, Peter, do not say anything snarky with what's about to come out of my mouth. Each of us has jobs and or has had jobs that we've had to go to every day. We all live, unless you're of this elite, like 1% of the world, most of <laughs> us live very similar lives in a lot of ways. We have, you know, we go do these things, we have jobs, we have our friends, we have our families, we do these things, we hate this, we love that. We all have similar things ways we live our lives but what makes it what makes each of our stories original is <laughs> us it's the way we perceive it it's our the filter through which we experience the world and that's what i loved is this story is super simple but it's these guys it's the characters they're they're not to say likable like as i say jake is kind of an ass i mean he's a he's like he's very curmudgeonly in a way but yeah like, I don't know if in real life he's a guy you'd want to hang out with. <laughs> but that being said, well, no, he's relatable. No. He's a relatable yep. guy who you're interested to see what he does next. And so they get through the – I love, by the way, once they, once they uh, get through the the barrier, the roadblock, and then the ba the barrier guys, all right, they know we got to kill him. Yeah. Then that's when the Jeep takes after him with the two guys, which leads to what you were talking about earlier, Peter, which is they have to run him off the road. They run off the road, explosion, which, by the way, that even felt it, all these movies I always do that a car like rolls over <laughs> and they explode. But yeah. weirdly, I think because they hit rocks, it felt yeah, more it realistic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's there's more fire explosions later on in this and yeah. it's just the classic in the 70s oh, if everything something exploded. got tapped it kind of it just yes. oh, and also explosion. every <laughs> and in the 70s every uh, any wheel on any vehicle screeched on sand oh, or yeah. any surface yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. awesome and you yeah. know what i love is they didn't feel the need to explain it it just was uh, go was, with it yeah. for love of god uh not exactly. everything has to be explained so nope. anyway the, so it blows up and what i loved is they stopped the truck and Keenan looks out and you can see it on his face. He feels bad because even these guys were trying to kill him. I thought yeah. that was a nor again, character. He's not a sociopath. You're going to They're feel bad that yeah. you may have just killed somebody who you just wanted to get off your tail. Cause at that point they don't know that those guys are going to kill him. They just know they're coming after him. So mm -hmm. I, I think I liked that that added something to his character, that he was a decent enough person that he it's a common humanity. Like, you don't you know, it's this it's, it's weird thing we get We're like, oh, yeah, well, the guy's trying to kill you. You kill him first. Yeah. OK, whatever. Until you have to look at somebody and realize you've just murdered a human being or kill in this case, it's self-defense. But you know what I mean? It's like I like that hey. Keenan Wynn had that moment and so that's what i'm saying this movie's filled with that i am done i obviously kind of like this movie allison you've been <laughs> you've not had a chance to get a word in edgewise <laughs> did you like the movie i guess we should ask that first <laughs> I, I feel like i liked it okay like okay. there were things about it i really liked and then i felt like it I get bored watching endless car chase scenes. <laughs> it's yeah. just not my thing. And this is also not the type of movie I'm looking for when I'm looking for a fun, spooky or it was not thriller spooky type. No. It was not, yeah, no. it's not a mystery. It's no. not like it's not it's what I'm looking for. Thriller or thriller action. But yeah. I will say it's nice 
doing this format because it exposes me to stuff that I ordinarily would just read about and be like, no, I'm not going to watch. And I did really like the main characters in it. And Mm -hmm. I thought I liked, I thought the story was well written. I got a little frustrated towards the end. I just felt like it dragged out a bit too long, which this is a normal length TV movie. It's like a hundred, like 115 minutes, yeah. which is kind of or standard. No, hour, hour, hour 50 minutes, right? Cause I'll yeah, 50 yeah. minutes. Or, or, sorry. Yeah, no, yeah, an no hour I, I want to make sure. Cause I was like, was it two hours? <laughs> no, 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 no. Sorry. Yeah. yeah anyway. So I'm, I'm kind of sleepy today. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. I just wanted to make sure um, I wasn't remembering sorry. it wrong. But yeah. So like, I, I definitely feel like it's, it's it's well put together and it's really well acted and you care about the character development which is great and i also really liked seeing a lot of these character regulars show up in this like there are mm-hmm. lots of recognizable faces some of them from like live action disney it was one of the, some of my associations like keenan Wynn was in uh, snowball express if anybody ever i've saw heard that of that i don't remember. it's a really fun yeah. movie yeah. um so yeah i didn't i didn't dislike it but i definitely found myself losing it like it was it was just harder to to keep an interest during certain parts like i just felt like in particular the helicopter chase was just helicopter a little chase went on for a while a yeah. little too long for me and i was honestly had that been tighter i would have enjoyed the movie just a little bit more because i liked the stuff with them interacting i liked when they were out smarting the guys that were pursuing them. Mm-hmm. I liked in the very beginning when they're just trying to speculate on what are we even hauling here? Like, yeah. what do we think this is? Cause that's totally what you would do. And yeah. I just, I, I liked the relatability. I liked some of the small town characters that they encountered. Yes. Like <laughs> yes, we'll the, um, the, new, the Noonans were great. Mrs. Yep. Briscoe, who's mayor and sheriff and postmaster of her own tiny Holy town thing. of Hawaii, was, was so was, good. Was she the mo- voice of the mother in Psycho or is that somebody? I, I feel like that, I, I know her name. somebody else. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, I know she's, uh, we, she has done... Uh, more, mostly for Disney movies, like she is the persuader, no persuaders, uh, the Fox rescuers. The oh, she was the Fox uh, yeah, the exactly. Yeah. Oh, was she Madame Mim in the rescuers? She was. Uh, she was no, she was Ellie um, May. Yeah, Ellie she was May. one of the the they they uh, out in the Ellie swamp. May. Out in the know. swamp, there's this old couple mice that they thought that's Ellie May. One of two hundred and five oh, okay. credits. Holy yeah, holy. No. I watched uh, both Fox and Hound and Rescuers on, uh, on, uh, Medusa. on the theater. Oh, yeah, you, know who, yeah. you, know, you know what? Oh, man, Actually, I'm in something else. Actually, uh, yeah. Sword in the Stone. <laughs> Peter, yeah. you know why I know her? She's in Cloak and Dagger, the one with uh, uh, oh, yeah, Henry yeah, yeah, Thomas yeah, yeah. and David yeah, yeah. Coleman, yeah, Jack yeah. Flack. But hold on, hold on, wait for it. I remember when we covered that years ago, being a surprise to discover Hold on. Psycho. She's the voice of Norma Bates. Oh, she oh, okay. okay. Oh, I thought I was like, I knew the name. I'm like, nice. I feel like yeah, so it's uncredited. They had, she wasn't credited as the voice, but she oh, was okay. the voice. Yeah. yeah but she's so, a, a so did lot she of go stuff. on and do the voice for the sequels? Then I don't too, know I, that. I don't I think like they so. use the same person. For yeah, I like don't know. Flashbacks and it's stuff. possible. I didn't look that up. But yeah, I, I, I definitely know she was the voice in the original, at least according to M. Well, she was hmm. the man who shot Liberty Valance. I like that one. Old Western cool, cool. movie. You're old. And she was actually a in, in an episode of Ghost Story, aka Circle of Fear. Oh, okay, cool. Which you one come. was she in? <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. I've seen them all. <laughs> I, I love doing that to Peter too. Where you're like, "Oh, which one was that?" He's like, "Oh, I didn't, I didn't write that recognize down at all. her though." Nope. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right. So I do want to talk about some of these side characters because only a few, but yeah. they're memorable. So we have uh, the Noonans, Mister Noonan yeah. and Eileen Noonan. And here's right off the bat. Immediately, very it all made sense. They're out in the middle of nowhere. It's very actually, it is kind of psycho esque in that the interstate. This is a very common issue, right? That happened once the interstate oh, yeah. system went in. A lot of these like mom and pop hotels, <laughs> like uh, where they were so, Mr. Like Newman had a lot to say about that. <laughs> well, well, here's the thing. <laughs> I one of my favorite things to do, even as a kid, is we would come up uh, 27 uh, in fl- through through Florida to get to Tallahassee and I'll take it, take smaller routes. Yes, like my dad would take us up these back yeah, yeah, ways yeah. to like take us either to Tallahassee or Super or whatever, or uh, to be halfway to pick up my sister because my parents, are, my mom, and my stepfather, and my sister were in Tallahassee at one point. We were down in in the the area we were in and. I remember we would go and he would tell me like he was old enough because he was born in 43. So when he was a kid, the like interstate system hadn't been built yet. So this was like the main 
route that you would have to take to get through you know and it's it's so interesting because there's still a lot of those motels there that have those like vintage mid-century signs on them still have on the signs you know you know air with air conditioning and cable you know i mean they still have that to them and there's still some there even now and it's like i just there's something about that i love it's because there's there's also something sad about it because you could see how just that one change caused all of these businesses and everything to just dry up and like mr Mr. Noonan, he's very hopeful. He's very optimistic that it's yeah. going to come back. You know, I love, I love actually uh, the fact that way back the, the features like all rooms with air conditioning. Oh yeah, well hey, <laughs> like depending today, on where you were the, in Florida, yeah. especially in places like Texas. Oh, that was yeah. a big deal. Well, no, that no, but like, again, big that, deal. that that was the main thing. Nowadays, it's just like everything is like standard now. Yes, but back then, ooh, all rooms with the, yes. Well, and then today's uh, young people or well, fairly young would say well sh- yeah sure why not well back then it was well, especially issue. because back there were a lot of motels it was like the uh, the window units so uh-huh. you know <laughs> if, if, if they all worked then all the rooms had it uh-huh. but but uh but yeah so lee purcell plays eileen his uh, granddaughter but i love yeah. the dynamic like the simplicity of the dynamic between the two of them and they again they don't do this thing where you're they treat the audience like we're stupid it's like it's it's gradually revealed that that's her grandfather and she's and she's she's like she's there because she wants to be there because she she's tried to leave but she comes back because he's really good to her and he she loves him and they care about each yeah. other you get that vibe yeah. and and because i love this she said that once in a while she packs her bags yeah, and leaves, but yeah. she always comes back. Yeah, and, and I and I liked that there's this back and forth between her and Jake that is very sexual, but it's subtext. It's not I, I it's not like this. ding 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 on no. the nose. You know, like I wrote this down with that <laughs> encounter. That romantic interlude sure came out of nowhere, huh? <laughs> yeah, we did. I think even though it did, there's still like a it works still I just, yeah. the language and the dialogue where exactly. they talk about walking and walking all night, and the, you know it's like obvious. Yeah, and I think they're both fairly lonely. Yes, lonesome, lonely people. Yes, he's so, a long haul trucker, and she yeah, yeah, she yeah. works helps her grandfather run his business that roof. basically gets so little. Visits. What did he say? You're the first truck I've seen in a, yeah. uh, was <laughs> a, a, a year's worth of Sundays or something. I don't know. Yeah, so, whatever yeah, the expression like was. So yeah, they're lo- they're all lonely people. I think that's an interesting point about this movie. All and of our protagonists and, and the and the supporting characters are lonely. Yeah, Mr. Noonan, you could see that uh, the, uh, the moment uh, Jake got out of the, the the truck, his mouth was off. Because he, oh, yeah. he probably hadn't had anyone Nest else friends, on the to talk to somebody. Yes, and, I mean, I've to met me, you've met people like that, right? Yeah. You can tell. Usually yeah. they're older, they don't get a lot of visitors, and it's like you could tell they're so hungry for a huh, connection. Like me? Just kidding. <laughs> I wasn't trying to I wasn't trying to throw you under the bridge, Peter. I know. But it was oh, wow, you that I was talking the about. Bridge this time? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but bridge. anyway, uh, what are your Sorry. thoughts about the Noonans, Allison? Well, I did make a caddy a caddy shack joke because <laughs> okay. I was just feeling Noonan. But no, actually, I I there was some things that um, mm. Lee Purcell's character said about going, you know, going to the cities, not liking people, and and mm-hmm. that she felt like it was fine yeah. to just have a blanket indictment for everyone being terrible, uh-huh. and that she hopes that the that people don't come to the motel like yeah. she just wants to be there and have Peace her own life. little retreat yeah. from the world and i thought that's really relatable like uh, I, yeah. I totally Very. understand yep. where this character is coming from that's like sometimes you know she's still young you got to socialize occasionally and she dips her toe in the water and then she's like that's enough i'm going yep. back to my to my quiet motel with my grandfather my and I don't want it to like, I mean, obviously, you know, you want to get by financially, but like if, if you don't really need to worry about that too much, then like, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, and did you, did you also, I also loved that it's this very simple, subtle thing about the character, but they didn't feel the need to do some shoehorn drama in about, no. Oh, she left her boyfriend and that, that, that it was none of that. It was just that. very, just like very bad. She's a, she's this independent person who just likes yeah. to be with her grandpa. Helping him paint the roof. 
yeah. leave her alone. I mean, leave me alone. Like, I, mm-hmm. I, 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 like that was good. But yeah, at the same time, they also then didn't feel the need to make her seem angry and like no. against the world. No, like, she's just she very, was, she, she just she doesn't like content. dealing with a lot of people. She's very happy. She seemed like a very sweet person who just doesn't want to deal with nonsense. Relatable. Yes. <laughs> very relatable. She wanted to walk all night, though. Now, she, now apparently, <laughs> she's an Olympian when it comes to walking. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, wow. Yeah, but, but but that's the thing is it was subtle. That's what I loved. Yeah. It was yeah. subtle. And so uh, uh, also then Mrs. Briscoe, who talk about <laughs> now she makes what Mr. A, Noonan look like a, 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 a curmudgeon that is a misanthrope oh and wants to do it. Because that poor woman shut up. is like, well, yeah, but think about it. She's probably borderline yeah. crazy. I mean, she's oh, like, you think? but 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 well, you, you think so. But then when she gets the she gets the memo real quick that like, oh, when they say we're being pursued by people, you want me to rest and them? she yeah. she just very calmly goes yes. and gets her shotgun yes. and yes. like no, and, I, she, I, I, and uh, she gets you know she takes takes keenan Wynn's character to the to the doctor yeah. she gets him in the truck but she's got her protection with her yes. and she she's just like okay like she was very excited to see them but once she realizes oh we have a situation she kind of buttons down and just Yes, does what needs to be done. Yes. I don't think she's not, sharing. Not, I mean, not crazy. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, she's crazy in a. I think in a it's, good. I, I was using that eccentric. Some, yeah, she's yeah, very. Yeah. Eccentric, yes. But she's very she, eccentric. Look, yeah, human beings are social creatures, and even those of us that, quite frankly, don't do great with crowds or want to be around lots of people, you need some interaction with somebody yeah. somewhere sometime. Sure. And this is a poor woman who has who, who she's she alludes to what her husband had died at that point. Mm-hmm. Her older her, her kids are adults. They moved away. Mm-hmm. And she's literally in this town. I'm using air quotes for those that are just yeah. listening alone that alone. And it's like God only knows, like if the new if the Newtons don't run into people, at least they have each other. Right. Yeah. She you has probably haven't seen them. nobody. No. Now, I don't I took her as. And it would be very easy to make her like the way out there crazy no, no, lady. No, 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 I didn't think it like don't. that. It's, she, it's, no. Again, it's it's it feels grounded in something approaching like how yeah, it would because, be. Yeah, because yeah, exactly. Because I mean, think about being there all alone, mm. but still kind of need to keep some sort of normalcy. Yeah, which is saying, oh, I I have to, but I have to lock up the the post yes. office because that's the that's law. That's a federal law. <laughs> exactly. Yes. All these things makes it feel like she is a little bit out there, but it's but it's kept her. It's, I would argue that's what would keep you sane. Is that routine? It, it, yeah. <laughs> because if things. she hadn't been like that yeah. and talking, she uh, probably like me. She goes around talking to herself. A hundred percent. Just uh, and probably doing different like personas, <laughs> like I'm the, the sheriff and the post. I would. Yeah. So I have to say real quick when we first see her town and we meet her at there's like a long shot of a cannon and I was yes. a little disappointed that the cannon wasn't uh, used on the helicopter. I, <laughs> I, so, that so nice. I totally thought, are we going to get Chekhov's cannon? <laughs> That's I, what Drew said. Drew's like, it's Chekhov's cannon. And yes, then, and my then. kids, they, so we saw the cannon. My kids watched this. They actually liked it too. Uh, and they, they said, we saw the cannon. They're like, why is there a kid? I I assume it's like a not a statue, but like a monument. It was some like or or, or something yeah, left over from like, yeah. or a war monument or something, something like, like that. that. So yeah. that's how I took it. And it, but yeah, had it been operational, that's I totally thought. And let's be frank, that's like the obvious thing to do. <laughs> we yeah. All yeah, yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but it would have kind of been awesome to figure like how they would. But that's probably where it would have completely jumped the shark for me because when yeah. it finally comes down <laughs> that. You know, the Jake character, Donnie's having heart problems. He's run out of his pills, I think, right? And he's having these problems. Yeah, you know, that was a sweet moment too when he when he when he leaves him. Yes. Mm-hmm. But it's when, the way when he does he, it. It's kind of cruel yeah. the way he does it. But it yeah. proves that point, by the way. I think there's this flaw that a lot of folks have about what it means to truly be kind to people, that it always involves this f- like niceties and politeness and being fake. Sometimes there's a level of toughness you got to give somebody especially when you know them really well so like jake knows donnie is too prideful to yeah. stay back 
this so, is why he says for about you you you're gonna slow me down i yeah i, can't, I, I mean can't, he does na- you see the hurt says, in his eyes like dottie's yeah. hurt yeah, but he it, says it, i it, can't it, i can't nanny you or be your nanny through something like that yes and, uh, it's, it's so, hurtful yeah. what he says yeah but you know it's like it's sort of like that that trope in like say harry and the hendersons like to get harry to go back you gotta throw things at him and make him scared of people again right <laughs> Because there's something, wow. cool. but I just way saying, to bring Harry on the Henders into this. Or my, just, my sister calls it white fanging someone because yes. the story of white fang. She's <laughs> nice. she said she's she her joke when she was younger is that she had to do that to a couple of guys she was dating. She's like, you got to white fang him sometimes. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I would assume in that scenario, was she doing it because she really liked them and wanted to spare them, get them back to get them back to their <laughs> native to place? That, that, <laughs> I feel like white fang is it's because you're oh. trying to save the wolf's life. Yeah, you know, like, it's, only it's not that. me it's you yeah 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 so yeah but that's, what, what, that's what, become that's become a term and, and actually that's what we like said during that scene i was like oh yeah I, I, I do like it. that but i kind of want to i want to make i want to make harrying them happen too so <laughs> but, 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 this one because you see the hurt in, in, in donnie's eyes yes but, but here's what i love peter go yeah, for it, it tell him tell it, him what a happened a few minutes later when uh, mrs briscoe come out, oh he left Jake leaves with the truck and he's left yeah. behind and with she mrs. comes out Brisco. with all of her gear and they're going on <laughs> and then and oh he left you here yeah and that's when he says yeah and then when he finishes up with that and and he tells what he is and he says and he's the best my best the best friend in the world or something like that he, he says, i almost geared up yeah he says he goes he goes yeah because i'm broken i yeah. all the things that jake had said yeah. and i'm the oh something like i'm the luckiest guy to have a best friend like that exactly. or something it's so like he again he sees yeah. it because he's not a moron and he has emotional no. intelligence. So he, yeah, knows. he knows that Jake doesn't leave him out of malice. It's because yes. he cares. He cares he about it. Yeah. Him. And the way things go down, it was the smart play because Donnie very well would have died. Uh-huh. I think. Is, had he been in the middle that of long that. Yes, because now case. that is probably the uh, one knock is that it does go <laughs> on forever. But I will say this: so they're, they're chase, into the bad guys chase uh, Jake in the truck in this helicopter. It's very much a. It reminded me of was it the opening of A Team when the helicopter? I feel like I've seen that type of helicopter mm-hmm. from like that, that era. It's like that that, that yeah. clear bubble. Looks like that thing would fall out of the sky so easy. It's terrifying to me. Those old helicopters. <laughs> you, you just flick it. Oh my god! Yeah. Can I say about the scene? I, I was a little bit, bit confused as to what their end goal was. It's like, well, if they if they shoot him mm-hmm. and kill him, he's driving the truck. Yeah. And if they shoot at parts of the truck and make it him lose control, there's a chance he's going to crash. Like, yeah. could the cargo they think he yeah. has get damaged? It's just like, yeah. I don't know. I was just, I was just thinking. Well, we don't know what it was, though, right? Like we don't know what want, the cargo is. Yeah, it was just frustrating because it just seemed like this seems like a do. stupid plan. Yeah. Well, since, just since they never cover tell him, and shoot at well, him. Well, I, I took it as, as, honestly, because they never explained these things. So it does give us the opportunity to fill it in. I would take it as if they've got helicopters ready and they're able to create fake roadblocks and they've got enough infrastructure in place to do all the stuff they're doing, they probably. Probably, I'm gonna guess what was whatever was inside because we don't know. We don't know. It's, it's just because they did. No, but they they probably knew. What they did. Well, yeah, the they, they knew. The Obviously, thing. they know because they're after it. But yeah. like, also, all three of the main villains had been separate and like coordinating up until this point, yeah. and then they're all in the helicopter. I think those are the things. Yeah. They're all in the helicopter. That was together. kind of hilarious, though. I didn't <laughs> see anyone on the ground. They didn't One show on anyone on the ground to yeah. help, and then it's like. They could potentially cause this truck yes. to like flip over. I or took it as even if or... that happened, though, that they would have had the ability to either get another truck out there or get a plane, you know, or something to get. Because I we assume that because it was a big rig, that whatever would be in the back was big. It didn't have to be. Yeah, it, it was overweight. They, they were stopped. Yeah. At sure. I, just, I don't know. This, this sequence would just I, I started. I went, from, I, I went from enjoying Swooping. to becoming irritated. I, so, I never felt like irritated, but I do agree it did drag on a bit. But I thought payoff, when they were doing the, the when they were doing the five hundred and sixty thousand swoop at the the rig, yeah. I was like, "Really? Come on!" But just, I will just, say this: the final moment. Oh my God! Yes, 
I wrote that down. Awesome, because <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, the way it goes down, where the bald guy runs up to the truck, and mm. uh, J- Jake was faking being shot and dead, and then he th- you know knocks him out, which apparently was very easy to do, and yeah. uh, and, and so then takes the truck and just goes. It was almost like the inverse of Duel, where we got to be with the truck driver the whole time, right? And so he just goes right the helicopter. They're running to the helicopter yeah. trying to get in. I, like, I was, I was actually it. thinking, yeah, I was thinking he's not, he's he's gonna. Oh my god! Well, he's was really cool, and this. I love how they did this. So the helicopter explodes upon impact, but I love that the the truck caught on fire. Do you guys see that? Like, yeah. yes, yeah. flames coming off the truck. Like, okay, that's badass. I kind of yeah, love that. that. Yeah, because that also got small nuances. Just when he uh, arrives at the way station in, in Houston, and Donnie's character is there, he like he, he kind of looks at the truck. It looks like it. It look, He's like, yeah. what happened to you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so he knew it, it, something bad went down. And yeah. again. Uh, probably knows that was a good thing that he was left behind yes mm-hmm. yes although did he say he got went to a hospital at Toronto? he was perfectly fine yeah, i'm okay but, i wonder with Dottie though <laughs> is he being honest like he's the kind of guy <laughs> that would say that but you know, in fact, he's not he being probably no, he's not okay. But he got medication, so he feels that's right. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. You know that that old guy thing. Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. Sure. Hey, 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 you you do know you're bleeding to death. Ah, it's fine. I'm, it's a flesh it's, wound. It's nothing yeah, but it's a, a flesh, flesh wound. wound. Yeah, exactly. nothing but a flesh wound. Exactly. I need to watch that again. <laughs> uh, so. Anyway, and then they bring it back. Uh, 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 they want to know what's inside. The guy who's checking. Yeah, they're, the- wait, they're they're they. Uh, they're six hours uh, late. They're six, and Jake, uh, uh, like when the way station. Uh, yeah, sure, it doesn't matter. Like, it wait, doesn't matter. Six that, hours late. I love that too. That was great. It's like, wait, wait a minute. You're telling me we had to be here by noon. We're six hours late. You got yeah, nothing to six, say. And, what's yeah. in the back of this thing, right? Yeah, and then. Bang. Yeah, but by the way, before he opened, that's what I said out loud. It's like, oh my god. They are a decoy. And I bet you Jake mm-hmm. is smart enough. He knew it too, but he wanted to see it for himself. He yeah. knew that's what it was. And it's that idea, like, was it for nothing? Well, no, then then Frank shows back up, the William Schaller character. Oh, mm-hmm. no, you were the decoy. We did, we figured you guys would give up after the first yeah. attack. It, yeah. We didn't <laughs> Either expect that or die. But they, right? But that's what their characters were about. Yeah. That's what this was really about, was their characters. The fact yeah. that they were willing to go the to the distance to get this done and not just quit, which is what this guy thought of them and thought they would do. Yeah. And the yeah. fact that uh, they did is kind of awesome about them as characters. And that I love the guy gives him the whole speech about, oh, you're doing this for your country and uh, corporation uh, and blah, uh, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. blam, knocks his butt yep. out. Oh, that was satisfying. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then and then he and Dottie do the walk away thing. And he gives him his $3,000. And uh, and then and he just says, then- yeah, what, go ahead, do it. And that's when you kind of tie it back together because he's going to seek out some someone about painting out the roof of the house. And that's all he says. That, oh, mwah, chef's kiss. He has to go, <laughs> oh, Eileen's waiting for me back at the uh, at the place because, you know, I, I I'm not like walking. that lately. You know, no, no, no. Uh, so I go see somebody helping to paint a roof of a house. It's yeah. like, beautiful. Yep. Give, give the audience the credit they deserve. We'll figure yep. it out. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Oh, and and, so and again, the brilliant part about this, we know the cargo in this truck, sand. Now we can say it, but we don't know what the cargo is. No, never find out. Which love I it. like. I, I like love that it. you get to guess. Love it. By the way, Mr. Abrams, that's a real mystery box. <laughs> it's still satisfying. Yeah. <laughs> you love the mystery box, but here's the problem. If you set it all up where the mystery is the whole point, then it's not satisfying when you don't no. find out. I loved it this that you didn't find out because it's like who cares? It really didn't matter in the great scheme of things. So no. uh, it wasn't the point. And I, uh, I, I personally wrong. love the movie. I totally get your point, Allison. That the helicopter it's, scene went yeah. on. I, mean, I think really. it was probably filler, right? Because they had to fill honestly, up the time. I think the problem. Was, yeah, that's what it felt like filler, and yes. it was. I think I was agitated by it because there were so many good things happening up until that point. And then I was like, why? Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. like, it's just not long enough. So make this, let's, let's watch the truck slowly drive through the desert. All this <laughs> helicopter oh, like, the, swarms uh, around it like a fly. And in regards to that scene where they're trying, they, they said that the roads are probably not that good. I was like, and, and then uh, the Jake uh, character walks in front of it. I'm going to see if the road's okay. And I was like, what road? 
There were, yeah, You're not by driving the way, on the but, but I, you know what I like? I do. I will say that like, that felt like a bit of filler too. However, it felt very real to me. Like that's that made exactly sense. Yeah. What yeah, they would do sense. Yeah. to test sure. to make sure the truck isn't going to fall into a yeah. pit somewhere. And I also thought, really, all they needed. And tell me if I'm I'm right on this, Allison, from a writing perspective. Rather than cut, you could have cut back and forth from the helicopter scene to Mrs. Briscoe and Donnie together as she takes him to like you know as I they go to the would have liked yeah. that yeah and because also least, it was it would have broken it up too it wouldn't have i made was it. wondering what was going on with them just because we see after they leave the noonans um that the noonans are being questioned yes. and threatened uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah in order to find out where they went with the truck and and so i kind of thought well can we assume that mrs briscoe you know mm. and donnie got a clean getaway did they mm -hmm. make it you know it just would have been yeah. it would have been cool i would have been more interested in i guess a little, a little bit more dialogue and a little but, more yeah. like human interaction than just watching a bunch of truck footage but yeah and the truck crawling through the desert with with jake walking in front actually made a lot of sense to me because it's like they're off-road if they pop a tire or mm -hmm. or throw an axle or something, they're, they're done. It's, it's so, kind of, it creates a little bit of tension that scene yeah. too, because you don't know because the way they're sh shooting it, and you can see that Donnie is not okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you, either he would kind of uh, maybe he would like faint or or pass and, like lurch forward and accidentally hit Jake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. that kind of created tension. I, what I was thinking more like. When Jake said, "I'm going to see if the road's okay," they're they're not driving on a road, and that was true. I thought the same. That was like, well, that's a really great road. <laughs> it's kind of like, like a <laughs> small pathway. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, it's like the path that wasn't traveled ever because there was. Yes. I mean, there wasn't. You know, there was. I guess there technically was a little bit like between yeah. the bushes, but, but it, it wasn't much. It was, yeah. but yeah, but, but it I, also sets up how how because you see how uh, bad. Donnie, the, the, uh, how far away he is because he, he gets progressively darker under his uh, eyes and yes. sweating. And yep. you see him struggling in that scene because he's really wrestling the wheel. Was it's this good tension building there. I And yeah. I couldn't, I'm, I'm not a filmmaker. I couldn't explain <clears throat> to you why that, which someone could argue was a slow scene, really worked for me. And then the next part with the helicopter did not. It was yeah. just, it was, um, there was just, I guess I could put myself in the shoes of the people. And then when it starts to be like helicopter chase was shooting, then oh, I just I kind totally of felt like I was getting. watching extra footage from the A-team, which I like. But yeah. I was just, it just didn't feel, Yeah, it took me out of it. It's dramatic no, I, tension. It's the dramatic tension. Yes, it's because I totally get what you mean. You, you, because it's okay. A good example of this is the original speed. Mm -hmm. um, because speed two doesn't is dead to me. No, it doesn't no, exist. Never saw speed two. No, no. Oh my God. It's the worst. <laughs> don't, I mean, the don't. fact that the subtitle is cruise control. Come on. I mean, uh, I think that's why I just was like, nah, pass. Yeah. <laughs> talk, talk, about, uh, talk about a scene dragging on with that ship. Never, ever, ever oh stopping as God. it just plows up on a, the, 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 yeah. And I was like, come on. It's, it is the worst. <laughs> and now you're going to relive yeah. some trauma. Uh, that movie. Oh, oh no. Oh, it's the worst. Anyway, so it bad things to me. But, Make a documentary <laughs> about it. <laughs> the original Speed, which is a fantastic movie, and I love That's it dearly. Uh, it's probably my top ten action movies of all time. Because think about it, that one you're dealing with a boss and back. But what do they do? They, we get, we know all the characters. We're in a constant juxtaposition and back and forth between who's going to make it, who's not. So when you've got the bus wheeling around and and going to have to go over a ramp and all these kind of like crazy stunts, there's still that groundedness with the characters constantly. That's why I said if somehow you could have had Donnie and Mrs. Briscoe not necessarily involved in what was happening with Jake, but cut back and forth to see if are they going to get him to the hospital her, time. Seeing, seeing them arrive at a doctor. Something. something. Yeah. And, you know, I feel like that could have broken. It would have given us a lull, enough yeah. of a mm -hmm. lull what happens to the helicopter stuff that when we come back to it, it needed to be chunked up because it was so long. And, yeah, you, you need know, something that in any the break, yeah. it, It's weird. It's like it, you think it would be, oh, that, what does it matter? But it does matter. You need to build that tension and then cut it off and then build some more tension and then cut it off. And you could have cut out probably a good three minutes of that. I don't yeah. know how long it actually was. But it feels say, like that it was that helicopter swooped down at the, the truck many a time. Many so times. Like, re really? Uh, either yeah. land on him or land yeah. well, land him. Yeah, yeah that's, that's why it felt repetitive to me. And yeah. I'm not going to like, it's, I'm not going to say don't watch this or like no, knock no, no, down no. the whole movie for it. It was really my 
my only complaint was just yeah. like this slowed it down somehow for me. Yeah. Well, because to your point, it's the, there was no dramatic tension. It was the tension came from well, yeah. we, we assumed Jake wasn't going to die. Now, ha, can I be honest with you? Donnie's in the truck and his heart's given out. That would have added to it. Right. If, if he is there. Sure. Definitely. So, uh, and that by taking him out I of it, it actually have a, a, a fraction <laughs> of a second or two where I'm thinking, are they actually going to kill Jake? I did think that too for yeah, a second. That, Cause that would have been, that would have been like, Oh wait, what? And then they open we, it sometimes the movies we watch are that dark. Like yeah. the, yeah. the old man who cried I, wolf. I'm glad it ended the way they did. Cause I really liked the characters. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad that the end of ended almost like a, like one of those like eighties or seventies shows where the, the two heroes kind of, uh, they've had like, little joke and then they walk up yeah. freeze frame. Oh, I like Donnie. Ending. I thought it was nice. I'm glad that we got a, a well, happy, I I'm not, I agree with you. Ending. I actually wouldn't have hated it if it had ended that way too. No. No, but well, it, it's just, nice that Donnie gets to go home to his wife and uh, uh oh, shit, Jake gets to go paint a Jake roof. Jake gets to go to to paint roofs. It's going to go paint a roof, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh I, I would say that just yeah, that's my only complaint is just the the pacing towards the end and the way it was the way it was put together because when you watch something like um like was it night terror yeah, the one that we Valley watched Harper. where it was yep. a pursuit was yeah that was so tight was, it was like yeah. you didn't yes. want to look away yes. and then also i mean i'd even say uh the martin balsam movie that we watched with edward g robinson the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the, the Grimm, right which you know yeah. it goes to dark places that doesn't let up either it's just like the pacing is yes. sometimes people you, you, say, oh, seventies yes. stuff will drag mm -hmm. or be yes. slower, which is a fair assessment of a lot of things. And I'm usually pretty patient with it. And, but I think it was just because I, there's certain things that make me kind of zone out and it's like extended car chase scenes that seem repetitive or um, like extended fight scenes. Yeah. If it's not really good martial arts, if it's just like CG, you know, I'm not going to, point the finger solely at marvel stuff but i, I start to no, glaze over I agree with you. I agree when with you. i yeah. see when it goes too long i was yep. like yeah put yep. it in there yep. sure but yeah. i don't want to watch it for what feels like 20 minutes it wasn't no, 20 minutes with you. but it felt like no I, it minutes. felt long and i think it, it, needed, it needed a dramatic it. tension yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. What, that's what yeah. was missing it's like just because that's the flaw right that people think action equals entertainment and it no. doesn't You've got okay. to be invested. It's it needs Warrior, to be well Mad edited. It needs to be well choreographed. Yes, it if it's Road Warrior, Mad Max 2. Well, works. and here's the thing. Fury Road is a good example because that's just one that long too. car chase, but it worked. And the reason you're why not it worked, bored. You're not, but you know why? <laughs> not bored. But look at the camera work. Like that's the mm -hmm. other aspect of this. This is very shot like your traditional set, which because I mean it's low budget, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. But and that's fine. But then you got to work with what you got you with character yeah, you and dialogue. Yeah, you yeah. Have to work and I think that it. honestly, the more I think this through, I love that Jake wanted to save Don. Like, okay, how about this? How about this? Ray, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Monday morning quarterback. This one. How about this? <laughs> yes. So Jake, you have that scene with Donnie, which we, it shows Jake's character. It shows Johnny's smart and gets it. Mm -hmm. He get he and his Briscoe get in their car, and then that they end up where Donnie convinces Miss Briscoe to go after Jake. So they end up somehow involved in the chase itself. And like you even have Miss Briscoe get out with the shotgun. I know. Right? She had the you shotgun. Get anything like that. You <laughs> I wanted anything to like that. use it. And, and somehow Donnie ends up back in the truck with Jake or something like that. And yes, it could have, it would probably end a little bit more dark and sad, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I feel like that would have given this us is, that, like, it, yeah, oh my god, because I care about these people. I don't want them to die. And Johnny's mm -hmm. got a bad ticker. This is Briscoe's a quirky old that's, lady yeah, that's with a the shotgun. Way to make, yeah, that's the way to make this long scene work. Yes, and they, and, but between. they wanted the. I think what it was. And this is a danger, and this is probably more of a knock on. And I get it because I always feel like. You know, having having dabbled with writing myself, you fall in love with a character. And the problem is you don't want bad things to happen to them, you know, because you're not a sociopath. But you also realize it's a great story sometimes requires bad things and they're not real people. But there's that part of you that feels like I really care about this person and I don't want bad things to happen to them. So I could see why you wouldn't you'd want it to end the way it did. But that being said, had Donnie and Mrs. Briscoe ended up in the situation as well, I feel like that would have added a layer to well, this. That would have been again, like, I think. If they had done, because that kind of, well, bothered is a strong word, because uh, 
he starts Jake's character when the helicopter is swooping around. He starts going off road mm -hmm. and driving around. And it's like, why? There's no way you can maneuver that big rig anyway. And there's nothing to Ooh. kind of shelter you. Just keep going for the main road. And that would cost attention because they, they said so. They needed to get to him before he got out to the main uh, highway because yep. it would be too crowded. So that would at least create a little bit more tension. Uh, but not much, but it would still have been a long scene. But instead of him driving painfully slow out in the fields and almost stopping, I was like, they could just walk up to him. I honestly not think... A, not a knock on the movie, though. I think there's ways it could have been improved, but I also think probably when this came out, I wasn't alive in the 70s, but I get the impression because I consume a lot of 70s media... The people were really into semi trucks and trucking. And there was a truckers. there was a fad, yes, and there, there was, was a, it was a window. whole thing and a whole genre. And so I kind of think that like while Left that doesn't work for me personally, I think there were people that were excited because there's a lot of just gratuitous shots of the truck throughout the movie. And yes. I think if you're into that, yeah, that's the fan service for those yeah, people. Exactly. And and so I think I think also I think. I think it's really well written and I think the you know the character development and the dialogue and everything and and probably somebody on the production team was like well we have a truck and we have a helicopter so we're going to use them <laughs> because also they together. were obsessed with helicopters in the 70s oh, yeah. and 80s. I watched yep. a lot of Magnum PI as a child and like an oh, A team course. and it's yep. like you have the helicopter and the helicopter's really not there to bring about the plot. The helicopter's there is because we got a helicopter and we're yes. going to use it. So I think it was just meant to appeal so what was Airwolf. popular at the time? Yeah. <laughs> well, here's what can I, can I interject one thing? And I, I agree with you in principle, Allison. I will just say that that whole I feel like that fad that was like there and it really only lasted a few years. It really was the later 70s because like I think I just looked up Convoy, Breaker, Breaker, Smoking the Bandit. Definitely. All of those were like 77, 78, 70. So this is 73, right? It was 72 or 73? Yeah, yeah. 73, right? Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I wonder, and I get what you know, look, doesn't mean that that wasn't still a thought that they were like, <laughs> oh, people love trucks. And, and I think partly was, we've got this huge truck. Let's use it. Right. They duel that way. Right. I mean, duel. Mm -hmm. But there's another example. Duel oh, they used shots from duel in an episode of the Hulk. They did. Yeah. Cause I was saying it's, it's a trucker episode. And I was thinking there, I've seen this scene before. And of course, that <laughs> goes, it's really kind of reused from Duel. Yeah, and it really, it's so funny because, like, with Duel is another counterbalance because it's really just David Mann by himself, other than a couple mm -hmm. of phone calls and interactions. Um, it, you know, he taught you hear his voices. Like, you have that narration through the whole thing because Spielberg realized if this guy's just, oh, you know, through the, it, what would that be? More. Yeah, yeah, he <laughs> needed to have that. Di so you, that's how he created. And honestly, I would say, if I'm being honest, as much as I love that movie and I love Bathus and I love Spielberg, I think that's one of the weaker aspects of it. Because I think it's a weird, I mean, I get it why we're in his head, but, it, and I know they why they had to do it because they didn't have anybody to talk to. But I, it is it is probably one of the weaker aspects of that movie for me. So I I think, but I do get your point. I mean, you're not. I mean, in my opinion, I it, it I'm willing to forgive that because I like so much else about the movie. Mm -hmm. But again, like Allison said, if you have a big truck and you have a helicopter, of course you need to put that in. It's just Come on. It's common sense. <laughs> yes. So, uh, yes. I had access to either of those things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For sure. All right. Well, on that note, then, hi, Jack, or hi, Jack. You just needed a comma. I, knew after, after the, I did that with my kids, <laughs> and they were like, they just stared at me like, really? That's your. Yeah. That's the level of dad joke we're doing now? <laughs> You're uh, out of here. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so I personally think was it like my favorite movie we've ever covered but i really love these characters like i wanted to yeah. spend more time mm -hmm. like i always want to you know what it is i want to like a series like a two season series that everyone forgot about starring jake and donnie as these guys have to do these, <laughs> ske these sketchy runs every week they get hired <laughs> for these like these like black market and you know governmental things yeah but that's that's the, the beauty of some of these uh, tv movies you have sometimes you have a script that's fairly basic but you have these because they had a lot of the the quote-unquote big actors in mm -hmm. the tv movies back then and they brought a level of of uh i don't know 
realness to it. Because yes. that's, I mean, because it, it, it works because this movie, again, it's nothing we haven't seen before or since, mm-hmm. but it works because of the actors and the characters. So uh, having uh, th- this level of actors in it, because both Keenan Wynn and David Jansen are really, really good actors. So, uh, oh, so, are you ready for funny? Uh, One of the writers on this thing, Michael Kelly, wrote hide and go shriek that is that we cover that on oh, day of the dead to do horror movies nice. it's the one about the teenagers in the fur funer- the furniture store yeah, with yeah, the yeah. psycho yeah uh, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah oh that movie's <laughs> that movie is i found it wildly entertaining but it is bonkers it's weird yeah that's yeah. a weird it wasn't terrible but it wasn't great but it was yeah dave z kind of loves spectacle. it dave z of picked it for does. us yeah he loved that movie um, there's like a, there's no. like an elevator that fe- features prominently in that one right like a big yes. freight elevator okay yes. yeah that is what i'm thinking of yep. yeah yep. yeah yeah yep. And uh, now the guy, James D. Buchanan, the name sounded familiar. He did a lot of TV, it looks like. Uh, I'm trying to see if he did anything we've done before just because his name sounded familiar. Hi, Jack. Horror at 37,000 feet. Oh, that. Oh, wow. That one. I, and I liked that one. It was that just was funny good, because when I heard the bonkers. title for this, I wondered if it would be an airplane movie. I did, like, too. Yeah, I thought it yeah. was. In fact, I thought it was. I told my kids, they asked what we're covering. Oh, yeah. And if I you said, look on, on IMDb, there's a sh- uh, there's a photo like it looks like a, uh, you see David Jansen. It says David Jansen, Neville Brand and Jeanette Nolan on it. Okay. Yeah. And I was like, wait, Neville Brand's not in this one. But there's another, and th- th- like uh, like Allison said, uh, I think the movie's called "This Is a Hijack," and that's uh, uh, an airplane. Plane. One? Yeah, and okay. Neville Brand is in that one, so maybe someone got confused. So, because I was thinking Neville Brand, Neville Brand is not. I looked through the cast list on different sites to see if someone it was uncredited, but Neville Brand's not in it. Because I would have recognized it. Yeah. Well, I, by the way, I just want to say real quick before we wrap this one up, Peter, I found the exact quote that we all really liked. So Jake says to Donnie when he's tying to towards the end, we should want him to not yeah, go yeah, with him. Yeah. He says, all right, I'll put it to you straight. You're old, you're sick, and you're no good to me. And then it says hmm. he exits. So he leaves. This is Briscoe comes out, says to Donnie, are you all right? And Donnie says, no, I'm not. I'm old. I'm sick. And I've got one hell of a buddy. Ah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the way he says it. Yeah, like, that's why I think it. that if he and Mrs. Briscoe had gone after now, I would say Jake would be mad that's at the, Donnie. That's the spinoff series, uh, Mrs. Briscoe and Donnie. Mrs. Briscoe, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's like, the, yeah, they they check in with her from time to time. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 She keeps great. telling people she's sheriff, but she doesn't have jurisdiction in yeah, that no, area, so yeah, no one no, listens sorry. to her. Yeah, she has to arrest everybody. <laughs> You have to go and uh, go 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 to the mayor, and then you see her run in the background, changing clothes into the mayor's <laughs> office. <laughs> All right, next Not movie a pick. Uniform. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. He wears like a weird hybrid outfit, like the top is both. Yeah, 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 yeah. With a sheriff's badge on it. All right, so we got the next. Well, there's okay. only nine and ten left, and I think who goes this time? I can't remember. Oh God. Uh... I feel See, like I, if, I think I think Allison, you went last time. I think I, you think said I might have. Yeah. All right. So you said nine or ten. Yes. I'm going to say nine. Of course. I wonder what n- number of Allison's going to pick next time. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a tough one. You're going to get to. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's see. Nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, we're going into the early 80s, 1982. And it's called Hotline. Oh, uh, I think I know what this is. OK. I, I, I seem to remember the. Kind of like a who's in it anyway. Well, this but movie hotline 1982. Yeah, movie should have taught me a valuable lesson, but of course it won't. Which is just because I hear a title, I shouldn't jump to conclusions about that movie. <laughs> We've had several movies like that that I've made yeah. that huge mistake, and uh, I need to stop doing that. Or I might just want to assume they all stink, and then I'll be happy, pleasantly surprised. But uh, but yeah. No, anyway, so hi Jack. Uh, definitely let us know if you're if you're hi, on the. On YouTube in the comments below. I never say that on here, but let us know what you think if you've seen this one. Um, obviously, don't worry about spoiling it because we just did. <laughs> oh yeah, don't yeah. Go to the YouTube and, and comment on the the. Yeah, I, I never tell anybody to do that for this or retro movie geek. No, and I really no. just started doing that. But uh, but yeah, so um, I guess then, uh, Allison, do you want to tell everybody where they can find ye? Here we go. Oh, here, <laughs> the usual <laughs> places. Um, you can hear episodes of my old podcast, The Haunted Davenport, at thehauntedavenport.com. Um, you can see some Halloween stuff over at Clark Memorial Gardens on Instagram. 
Cool, cool, cool. Peter? Yes, here. Where can they find you? Basically here, because ever since we moved Forgotten Flicks stuff over here to Retro Movie Geek, and then the Terran the Tube is here too, that's kind of where you can find me. Yeah. Or on Hughes. Uh, RetroMovieGeek.com is what you're saying. RetroMovieGeek.com, yeah. Instead of error 404 not found. <laughs> yes, instead of error yes. 404 not found. Or under, I think it says under construction. It says under construction right, yeah. uh, at the moment. So no, uh, RetroMovieGeek.com is where you can basically find this. It's becoming like uh, the, 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 Robertson, uh, the Robertson the uh, Robertson network of podcasts. The, yeah, I, I got a ways <laughs> to go for that. Daryl's got like... You need like 20 yeah. more podcasts. I, I, I need like 800 <laughs> like Daryl does, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, or then go to Hughes, uh, the, the Undead Wookiee podcast, where I pop up from time to time. Cool, cool, cool. Well, I could be found, of course, right here and all Oops, those there. other places like Retro Movie Geek and oh, and and right here, sitting where I'm at. Oh, I just heard thud. Is that? Oh, hold on. Oh, it's a oh, jet. Wow. I heard it. Did you hear it? <laughs> I, I, no, I have one word. Squirrel. No, it was a jet. I thought it was thunder. <laughs> you, wait, what, what happened? What, what? No, because they're getting, I think they're getting ready. Not this, I think we have another week or two. We have this like thing where the airplanes come in and they do a big show and all that. Mm. So we get like these like jets that go f- screaming over the top of our house. I was mm. like, is that thunder or is it a jet? Okay. <laughs> um, anyway, um, so yes, I can be found here retro movie geek along with peter and uh, of course tear the tube along with peter and allison and oh, duh if you're listening to it you know that <laughs> and then, or are you <laughs> or are you or do you turn it off the second it's um in which case you wouldn't be listening to this anyway so who cares so also uh, jay the dead's new horror movies be sure to check that out on the on the uh, channel on youtube as well we have my almost hour-long discussion with Jay of the Dead on video. We also put it on the on the Jay of the Dead show, Horror Lagoon, for Jan Gell, the beast from the East. <laughs> Go and, listen to it. And, and Jan Gell, too. <laughs> yep. Oh, Jan Gell. P- Peter, <laughs> did I not do an excellent job for almost an hour marginally yeah. defending maybe the indefensible? Yes. You know, and you made me excited to watch the second one because Joel's wine cubes in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's and he's the high point by far. And it is it makes the first Jan Gell look like high art. The Jan Gell people should start giving you guys some some kind of some story, yeah. cut or I feel like the amount of attention <laughs> that oh. you all have been giving Jan Kel. Also, maybe maybe if they do a, an anniversary edition, there should be a poll quote on the box from Jay. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah I um, uh, it, it's funny because the uh, uh, I think it was that conversation where I came up with the whole thing where I said I should remake it. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was fun. <laughs> oh, and of course, Mom and Pop Video Shop. There you go. <laughs> you exactly. Don't forget that of this Channel. show and the fact that I'm showing things to a camera. If you're just listening, that didn't mean much to you. Oh uh, yeah. Maybe Oops. maybe if you were watching it, it may not have meant much to you, but you know. That's it's an fun. incentive to go to the yes, Mama Pop yes, Pop. indeed, yes, indeed. So be sure to go there and and check out the podcast. This Richard Movie Geeks there and to subscribe. And until next time, remember when it's late at night and you can't sleep, you might find yourself flipping through the channels. And if you do, I don't know what that was. Beware, because you never know when you just might stumble across terror on. The tube!